What's going on, guys? How's everybody doing? What's today? Today's, I gotta look at the calendar. Today's, uh, today's Thursday. Today is officially seven days from the next session of Raising the Bar. I'm so stinking excited. Like, y'all don't understand how that program gives me life. My clients just give me life. I'm so excited. Um, but it's, um, this week, the next few days are going to be, um, hey Marcus, um, the next few days are going to be, um, interesting because I have a really, really big anniversary coming up, um, next week on the 17th and the 18th. Um, two monumental things happened in my life that changed the trajectory of my life as I knew it. Um, and so, you know, thinking about what the next few days represents, thinking about, hey Oscar, what's going on guys? Um, thinking about how one event, one decision, one choice can change your life. And so that's what I want to talk about today, um, about how we think and how that impacts our lives and our choices and therefore our results. So as you guys begin to come in, I see some of y'all joining in. Um, share this out, invite some others into the conversation if you would like. Um, I would definitely appreciate that. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Marcy Batiste. I am a speaker and an author, but more importantly, I'm America's number one reality-based success and recovery trainer. And reality-based is so important because it's that connection. You're either connected with reality or you're disconnected. And it's all about making that reconnection with reality. It's about reconnecting the disconnects that we've experienced through um, the normal process of life, the normal process of living. And um, so for those of you who um, are not familiar with um, kind of my platform, um, there's a couple things you should know. Sold out to my happiness. That's Ace Boom. That's my guiding light, my North Star, my true north, my whatever you want to call it. Um, that's really what I live by. That's how I measure relationships. That's how I measure business decisions. That's how I measure everything is by how it impacts my personal happiness. And my happiness ain't got nothing to do with nobody but me. Um, second thing is that I live life on Mars, which that's where the whole it doesn't have anything to do with nobody but me. My world, my life, my rules, that's what I operate off of, um, but always to the point of how does this affect my happiness, how does this choice affect my happiness. And then the third thing is that my favorite thing in the whole wide world is to help other women shine. I want everyone, every woman, every man to be able to look in the mirror and truly be happy about their choices, happy about their situations. I want them to be able to be alone with themselves and love that experience, right? And so, anyway, I won't go on to a whole long diatribe about that, but that gives you kind of an idea of where I come from, um, truly helping women discover and embrace their star power so they can ignite the light for someone else. And so I, I firmly believe that shining a light for someone else will never dim yours. It just illuminates the entire room entire universe and I'm dedicated I want to change the world like I want to change the world um, I want when I die for um, I want I want to, I want to have left the world better because I was here I want to ensure that it's a better place because I was here um, anyway I could go I could go on and on about that but I'm not going to because we're here for 30 books in 30 weeks and this week we we're talking about the battlefield of the mind and um, I started out sharing with you guys that this is a really, really important week for me. Um, it's the week of my happiness anniversary. That's the week that I sold out to my happiness. Um, it is also the week that I uh, began my road to recovery from domestic violence. Um, it is representative of the, the, the day six years ago that I changed my thinking. And that is why this is important. Um, what's going on, James? Hey, Earl. It's important because how we think 
changes how we behave. It changes how we make choices. And so I shared with you guys a few minutes ago that I use my happiness as my measurement tool, right? Oh, thanks, James. Um, I use my happiness as my measurement tool. And because I use my happiness as my measurement tool, I am able to always stay true to me. So I don't find myself making a whole lot of decisions that are regrettable anymore. I don't find myself, now that doesn't say I don't make mistakes, because I do still make mistakes, but they're not regrettable choices. So if it's a mistake, but I'm not regretful of it, how is that possible, right? It's possible because I always make the investment to think about what I'm doing. I think about who I'm engaging with. I think about the relationships and what I want it to look like. I think about what it looks like all grown up, which was something that I didn't do before. I used to, um, I used to react instead of respond. And so when we talk about all the crap that we've been through, right? I was a very reactionary person. I operated in relationships from a standpoint of, if you like me, I like you. And I didn't put too much thought into it. And that led me to um, a very dangerous place. A very dangerous place that could have ended my life, honestly. Um, and so that's why I say this week is such a powerful week for me. And I'm so, I'm so abundantly full right now. Because I just realized, I just did a post, but I just realized that my laser coaching program starts on April 19th. The anniversary to my happiness is April 18th. And the day that I decided to recover and change my life was April 17th. So this week coming up, like these next five days, seven days, is one that always affects me but it affects me in a different way now so I used to um, get really sad around this time for the first couple of years I would get really sad so that was those first two years was my 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 healing journey it was a journey of recovery it was a journey of self-discovery um, and it was really tough it was really tough and then I turned a corner when I changed how I thought and when I realized how me being able to control what's up here was able to control everything else going on around me. I can't control how people, ha what happens in the world. I can't control how other people behave, but I certainly can control how I think about it and therefore how I respond to it and not how I react to it. So it was a completely different, um, it was a completely different mindset. And so it's interesting because I always tell you guys, that the universe gives you everything that you need right when you need it. When the student's ready, the teacher will appear, right? So I'm reading Battlefield of the Mind this week, and this is our 30 books in 30 weeks. We're on week 15, and so I get to chapter 7, and we're ta she's talking about, um, think about what you're thinking about, is the title of chapter 7. Think about what you're thinking about. That's interesting, right? I was like, hmm, that would be so appropriate for this week so she enters into the chapter and she's taking from mark 4 and 24 the book is written by joyce mayer so i'm sure most of you are very very familiar with her work um i can't believe i haven't i haven't read this book before but anyway um she says be careful what you're hearing hearing the measure you give will be the measure will be the measure that comes back to you. The measure that you give is the measure that will come back to you. So what you what you hear translates into what you think, and that comes back to you. One of the things, what's going on, Gregory? One of the things I tell my clients all the time is you um, operate from a standpoint of a four-to-one ratio based on what you hear from other people and what you think. So by the time you think it, so you've got the thought, you've got hearing it in your mind, you speak it out, and then you hear it back in again when you speak it. So that's a four to one ratio versus when someone else says something to you, you simply hear it. And it may be, as they say, go in one ear and out the other. A lot of times that's a good thing because all they're giving you is more crap. And we've already dealt with enough crap, right? And so um, what, what you think about comes back to you. And so I was 
I was applying this to the monumental um, change and the monumental shift that I went through six years ago and how um, unbeknownst to me I was creating a lot of the chaos in my own life and but I didn't see it that way and I, I blamed other people and I remember when I was in I was in therapy it was early on I think it was mm, it was maybe about see the domestic violence happened in April um, so it was probably May or June because I was in I was in uh, I had a therapist at the time and we were doing some work some pretty intensive work about um, how I make decisions right and I realized in that moment that I don't I didn't think like I don't even know how to describe it it just comes it just really popped into my mind like I didn't think when I looked at my career as a banker and an executive and a leader I always thought things through I was very strategic I was very intentional but when it came to my personal life choices and those decisions I was reactionary I never thought it through from start to finish I wasn't strategic about it and so that was kind of like a, a aha moment that's when the light kind of clicked on and I was like if you want to deal with all this crap you have to learn to think it through which meant that I had to go all the way back to childhood and deal with a whole lot of stuff a whole lot of crap a whole lot of BS a whole lot of bad stuff that happened to me right um, and I had to think through each and every scenario I had to think through and I remember when I wrote my first book journey to find your butterfly potential um, that came kind of on the heels of this discovery about how I think and so the premise of how I wrote the book is um, about um, my first client Ray and how um, we, we looked at how did she get into these various phases of her life and more importantly how do you move through a traumatic phase how do you move through the BS the bad stuff how do you deal with the crap and ensure that the crap doesn't keep happening over and over and over and over you have to be strategic about it and so that was how I wrote the book but that book although I was writing the book it was it was continual therapy for me because it forced me then to think through each of those decisions each of those choices and I had to um, assume ownership as I was writing about Ray my first client I had to think about Marcy and how does Marcy process information how does Marcy um, deal with um, trauma how does Marcy deal with confrontation how does Marcy deal with struggle and it was really that moment um, during the, those few months where I really learned to get in touch with reality and so when we talk about why well, I told you I'm a reality based success and recovery trainer why is that because that disconnect between what we think and what is reality is what jacks us up you have to reconnect the disconnect with reality and it's a scary thing if you don't have the tools to do it and so everything that 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 I learned during that process is two years of intensive um, self therapy um, mental therapy emotional therapy spiritual therapy all of that intensive two years I say I took a hiatus from life and I took that hiatus and learned how to freaking think I learned how to process situations I learned how to process information I learned how to process emotion and not just stuff it away I learned how to deal with the BS the bad stuff I learned how to deal with the crap I found clarity I learned how to respond right I learned how to be accountable for my choices and I learned the most important thing I learned was prayer I learned how to pray for discernment and guidance discernment and guidance and I shared with you guys before um, numerous times I don't pray for stuff I don't pray for 
answers. I pray for discernment and guidance, discernment and guidance. I pray for that clarity to provide me the information that I need to respond and accept accountability which brings me back to prayer, crap, C-R-A-P. It's that simple. That's how you deal with crap. That's That was really what I learned. That's the process. Um, and then there are pillars that I've built my life around that secure happiness. But you can't, you can't continue to, to blame other people. You can't continue to um, stuff stuff down and pretend like the BS didn't happen because it did. It did and it's jacking you up it's jacking up your relationships it's jacking up how you love and how you how you have the ability to be loved which is critical because people don't think about their ability to be loved they think about oh I I hear people all the time when I love I love hard okay that's not necessarily a good thing if you're not loving in harmony Right, if you if you're not in a reciprocal relationship and a reciprocal reci re, uh, situation, a reciprocal relationship, and you just loving hard, that means you're pouring out and you're not getting anything back. That's not a good thing. You got to think it through, and realize what am I getting out of this? Is it is it in harmony with what I'm investing into it? And and when you look at that return on investments, that's one of those things where. As you start to learn how to get in touch with reality and you start, for me, I use my happiness as my barometer. Ooh, baby. If you are if you are impeding my happiness, uh, that's probably not going to be too good for us long term. And I shared I shared a video um, the other day from Plies and he was talking about that same thing, kind of that harmony in the relationships and is what I'm given equal to what I'm getting back. And it's not always going to be equal. So I think that's a little bit of a... Think, think that through. It's not always going to be equal, but it should be in harmony, right? And um, he said, we ain't got to be beefing. Chuck the deuces and keep it moving. And that's really, really as simple as it can be. But it takes a lot of work to get there. So think about what you're thinking about because you are at a four to one ratio from what you hear. And remember that every time you think it, you're hearing it. And before you know, you're speaking it. And beyond that, then you start to act that out. You, the universe will always deliver to you whatever you put out. It's going to give you back whatever you give it. It's, it's like the law of attraction. It's like gravity. What goes up must come down. What you put out must come back. It's like a boomerang. Life is a boomerang. The universe will give you back what you put out. So if you're putting out BS and crap, guess what you're going to get back? BS and crap. But if you invest the time to think, think things through, think conversations through. I do a whole um, series on critical conversation, crucial conversations and how critical it is that when the stakes are high, you have a difference of opinions, emotions are at their peak. Um, it's, it becomes very crucial because there is some, somebody's going to lose and you have to be able to make conversations safe, etc. I won't go into the whole thing about crucial conversation, but it's a whole training. So if you missed that, I did a series on that um, a few weeks back. It's on my YouTube channel. You can check that out. But think about how you think. You're at a four to one ratio based on your thinking versus what the other, what anyone else delivers to you. And when you understand that, that you're at four to one ratio based on how you think, you can't help but get in touch with reality and understand that you got to be accountable for your own crap. You got to be accountable for how you think and how you respond to situations, people, relationships, etc. It's a choice. If you want something different, choose different. It's that simple. Anyway, as always, guys, thanks for living life on Mars. That's the word today from Battlefield of Mind. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a great book. So, that's it for me today. Um, have a great day. Have a great Thursday. Got some exciting stuff coming up this, this coming week in celebration for my happiness anniversary. And I'm excited to share that with you all as well. As always, thanks for living life on Mars, and I'm out of here.